the official SEMA garage. What is going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlogs. Today is pretty freaking special. I was able to come out here to the official SEMA garage. We're gonna check out the Ford F-150 Lightning. So I got flown out, I had a full day of work. We're coming in at, you know, seven o'clock at night. We're gonna check out the F-150 Lightning before, you know, anyone else really can, before this vehicle is out on the streets. I did see on the F-150 Lightning forum, some of those people have been getting their build dates here recently and their window stickers, which is similar to a Ford vehicle that I have on order currently, and it's currently getting built. So this right now is my production week of my new Ford vehicle, which some of you guys may know what it is. I'm gonna hop into the F-150 Lightning, and I'm gonna show you guys some of those details, some of the cool features, and also learn a little bit more about the SEMA garage. So finally, we are inside the SEMA garage, and it got a little bit later than I expected, but that's because we had to work a full day, we had to fly, we had delays, but we're here now with the F-150 Lightning, and this thing honestly has a presence a lot different than the F-150s you're seeing currently on the road. Main thing like I want to take away just looking exterior wise, grill. It's something that we have to get used to that they're getting rid of. And honestly, they don't really need any type of airflow other than maybe for brakes or some light cooling. But it's just something that we keep on vehicles. I was seeing a post about this. It's something they keep on vehicles just so we don't feel super weird about adopting EVs. This F-150 is basically going to set the tone of the future of the F-Series truck, which we all know is the most loved truck here in America. This thing is actually coming to Australia next in two years, I think. They just announced that. So the F-150, you guys all know and love, is making a huge improvement here and striding more towards the EV side, which I'm sure with gas prices right now, we're all pretty happy about. And today we are in the SEMA garage, as you can see the banner here. And this is Luis, who is our new buddy, who is the guy to talk to about the F-150 Lightning. So Luis, why is this truck here? Yeah, so um, within SEMA garage, we offer uh, various different um, services that are really catered to help the aftermarket manufacturers develop products. Uh, so this truck is here for a, an event called the measuring session. And they're very exclusive, unique events where we can bring in vehicles that are either, either pre-production or new released. And we invite aftermarket companies to come by and take a look at them, measure them. You can bring in 3D scanning equipment, to bring in physical measurement equipment. The whole idea is for them to come in and collect data, take that back to their engineering departments and develop products. Now, this truck's not gonna hit the market till about summertime of this year. So we have a couple of months ahead of it hitting the dealer lots. So these companies can actually go back and develop products and have them ready to go by the time that the truck hits the dealer lots. That's why whenever you see cars come out and immediately there's an exhaust available or wheels that fit perfectly or new headlights or something like that, that's why, is because those companies take advantage of the benefits of SEMA Garage where they can measure, they can get those parts, the CAD files, things like that. They can get those parts like headed out the door as you guys purchase these vehicles. Cause look, we all like driving unique vehicles and that's what these companies allow us to do is to modify it and make it our own. So even EVs are modifiable and we'll get into some of the things that are kind of on the horizon for EVs because it's, it's no longer carburetors, it's no longer superchargers. Well, in a way it is, didn't mean to do that, but in a way it is superchargers but we're gonna see what kind of parts are gonna be on the market for EVs because everyone wants better, faster, stronger, and bigger, so we'll get into that. So the first thing I wanna go over, just the way we're gonna work through this, I think is we're gonna start when the exterior, we're gonna see the differences of the new F-150 Lightning versus current gas F-150s, and we'll kinda of see what ideas people may be having, maybe Luis can share what he's heard about what they might be looking to change. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, you pointed this out earlier with the grill, right? So we don't need that massive cooling air dam anymore, right? So we have this, we have this unique fascia here that brings in a light right across the entire front fascia here. Very unique, very futuristic looking, right? Um, you also see a lot of sensors on these vehicles. And now I want to point out the fact that you have obviously your parking sensors here, but there's also sensors behind this cover. There are sensors behind this cover as well, stuff that's very well hidden in there. So again, a lot of that advanced driver assist uh, technology that's gonna be on board, of, on board of this EV along with others as well. Um, 
you can see these, uh, this is basically where you charge your truck. Now where you plug in the port is actually on the other side. So again, one of those things that you're gonna see in a lot of EVs. Now let's take a look at the wheels too. Um, with a lot of the EVs, you're gonna see a much larger OEM uh, factory wheel now. And that's because they're gonna have much larger brakes uh, as, a, as an overall package, right? With all that stopping power. Um, so it's gonna change the game when it comes down to making an aftermarket wheel. Now everything's gonna be pretty much upsized rather than downsizing, right? Um, so let's head over towards the back. Now, the overall profile of the truck looks very much like an F-150, right? But again, certain things like your advanced driver assist systems, your tailgate, um, you have different lighting here. So very neat looking. Oh, nice. Fully electric tailgate. Oh yeah, yeah, and fully electric front. Why don't we go take a look at that? Oh yeah, actually. let's do the front. Yeah. That's totally different. One thing that we gain out of the one out of the EVs now is that we get more essentially storage space, right? You lose the entire engine that's up in the front, um, and you also get a lot more cabin space, right? Because now your floors can actually drop down a little bit longer uh, to the towards the ground because you no longer have that exhaust. So take a look at the front here. Well, there it goes. Fully Dude, that right. thing's huge. And you got your ports. Yeah. Oh, that's a ton of ports. It's like a full garage right there. Oh my gosh, and take a look at this. You have storage solutions everywhere. Everything. And I mean, it's it's just a lot of new opportunities that are available to the aftermarket. Yeah, I mean, first thing that comes to mind for me, and Luis and I were kind of talking about this, is the Overland guys. They're going to love this extra storage because maybe it's a slide out drawer. Maybe it's a bunch of racks for a recovery gear. You don't know really until you start keep doing those cat designs and playing with it. But this is so much more, I mean, the truck bed is already a lot of storage, but now you have even more storage that's nice and dry and airtight that it's, it's gonna open up a lot of opportunities for overlanders, which is super popular. I know some of you guys are hating on the naming. I know, I know. We did that on the, the Mach-E. I, I, we talked about it, we already know. This is kind of the future, you guys. It's definitely coming, even though Ford has the Lightning and we all know it's the SVT, things like that. I think this thing's gonna smoke an SVT lighting. I think the Mach-E is gonna smoke most GTs. It's, it's just something that we have to get used to. It's not to replace gas necessarily, but it's something to add onto our gas cars. So this is at least you know your daily driver or your new off-roader. You don't always have to have gas for that, especially if it makes sense for your lifestyle and it's really becoming more attainable and it's making more sense for more lifestyles. So the EVs aren't your old school EVs they're really pushing the, the limits of what the technology is doing and how much vehicle we get for our money. The coolest features here is, again, you wanna make the truck comfortable and user friendly, right? And uh, having that ability to deliver power when needed, right? So if you take a look back here, you actually have a 240 volt plug in the back of this bed. So that's, I mean, if you're, if you're working, if you're at a work site, you can actually power a light welder, a skill saw, something like that of the sort. And you have the utility bed in the back here where you can actually you know, utilize your machines and get to work uh, and not have to worry about carrying a generator. Yeah, that's nuts. Like basically you could run a washer dryer off of your truck. <laughs> you, you really could. Like, that's pretty nuts. And think about overlanding when you're out in the wilderness and there's no power out there or lights, right? Usually when I, what I do is I, I either have flashlights or headlamps, right? Yeah. But think about it, if you're in the back of your truck, now you have lighting all around. Yeah, and it's super efficient. It's LED, your whole vehicle's electric, so you're not worried about it killing your battery. Mm -hmm. That's another big aspect on overlanding is taking power with you. So a lot of people use these other brand uh, power boxes to kind of keep the creature comforts. Well, all that can be built into your vehicle. People add dual batteries, run all this wiring, things like that. How about it's just built into your vehicle because the OEMs kind of have that in mind. So that's the benefit of basically all these OEMs listening to what people are wanting and putting it in those vehicles. So we're seeing a huge, huge push on all fronts for EV. And it seems like these companies are really listening to the enthusiasts of what we're wanting to do. And they're not maybe providing everything, but they're allowing aftermarket companies to fill the gaps. We're underneath the vehicle. Luis, what are we looking at here? So you are standing right underneath the life of the truck, right? You're talking, you're talking the battery pack. So that's sandwiched between both frame rails here um, and very well protected these skid plates. Definitely. Uh, this specific uh, trim level has the extended battery pack. So you can get up, up over 300 miles per one single charge on this truck. So that's exactly what this is what's delivering the life of that. And it's nice and low, so the center of gravity is nice and low here. 
And like you said, extended range, 300 miles on a truck, an EV truck, yeah. that's pretty freaking good. And you still have about 8.9 inches of ground clearance. That's nuts, especially because, you know, we're gonna talk about it, but the lifts are definitely coming, but factory to basically run a street tire and have that much ground clearance, for an EV is pretty good. Remember, most EVs are cars, so they're sitting pretty low, mm -hmm. even adjustable suspension. Yep. To have a truck that's this high and not dragging frame rails across things is pretty impressive. <laughs> that, that, that is absolutely true. Now, one other thing about this specific truck, it's got the dual motor. So it's got a motor that feeds power to the front wheels, and it's got a second motor delivering power to the rear wheels, completely independent of each other. And there is no physical connection in between the two. So it's all driven by wire. Um, and you can see that here. And one very important thing that I want to point out here is you have these massive control arms here, right? Uh, so one thing that you should note is that you no longer have a solid axle from left to right here. You're independent suspension all around. Now, what that does to your payload, you, have, you still have about an 1,800-pound payload on this. And you can tow up to 10,000 pounds. So that's pretty, it's pretty significant for an EV. Yeah, that is especially having a non solder axle, which does improve your ride quality. Trust me, I know I have a Mustang with a solder axle. Trust me, guys, I definitely know that. And the fact that for me to see this, it was like a shocker because I was like, I've never seen a truck in the last, what, 30 years have this type of suspension. It's, it's pretty massive. It's pretty different, man. Like, this thing is. Bulky. Like, look at the size of that compared to my hand, you guys. This is a control arm. Most control arms are about that thin. Yeah. About two to three inches, maybe. This thing's huge. And another thing I want to mention is we're going to deal with some skid plates here, I'm sure, with the overlanding, right? We do that even if we never touch it. A lot of overland trucks end up just hitting at the mall. But the protection here, what I love, is that these bolts are not facing downward. So that's not a thread that's going to get knocked off similar to other designs and i really appreciate that so this is very smart the way they're they're kind of making this skid proof already yeah and with the and one thing to note too is that with a lot of new evs they're all significantly heavy you look at the overall weight of those vehicles whether it's truck or car it's going to be up there so a lot of the suspension had to be redesigned to withstand that weight and again, we're talking about a payload weight, towing weight, so all that has been considered in the design of this. And I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but this truck actually puts out over 500, 560 horsepower. Wow, so 560 horsepower, what's the torque? Do you have that off the top uh, of It's over 700. Wow, 700 torque with a truck. We're talking diesel torque numbers here, guys. Legit diesel torque numbers out of an EV, not a solder axle, so smoother suspension. You're also gonna get 300 miles of range. Like for your everyday stuff and your overlanding, like most overlanding trips are probably 100 miles away plus five to 10 miles deep. Like let's be honest, we're not doing cross country here. So this is perfect. And you're gonna have power while you're out there on the, on the trip. You can have your girlfriend or wife go and she's not gonna complain, which means more time out in the woods for you and your buddies. It's really, it's making, it's making a lot of sense. First thing I notice, cool material here. This is way better than plastic, I tell you that. B&O looks very nice. I haven't actually been in the new body uh, F-Series. So, here we are. Now we're in here. Giant, giant screen. Honestly, very high quality. I love the gloss. The shifter that tucks away that everyone knows. Mm -hmm. And then check this out. So exclusive to this truck here, I believe, um, is the fact Whoa. that you have this almost like workstation desk yeah so it's pretty strong man. so when you're when you're sitting at the at the charging station now you can bring your laptop your if you have your you notepad and you're actually you can be productive instead of just sitting there right for yeah. 30 45 minutes to no, get a charge this makes so much sense because like you said sitting at the charger that's a qualm people have about mm -hmm. a ev well now if you're just going to sit there like what is watching videos on youtube at home versus charging your vehicle you pointed out the large screen right so yeah it's like you're at the theater. Nice. Oh, you even got games on here? Knob here, very simple. Everything's touchscreen minus the knob. Even the volume and like power is yeah. all touchscreen, which is kind of cool. I'm a big sound system guy, and if you have all this power, that's one thing that everyone has to do is like the big three or dual batteries and add amps. This thing should have a pretty decent sound system being that it's B&O and battery powered. Like you have all the power on tap right there. Exactly. Now, um, I, on the Platinum version of a Lightning, I don't know if you knew this, but they came out with the Blue Cruise technology now. 
What's that? So Blue Cruise is really, it's, it's the next level of advanced driver assist systems. So it's almost like level three autonomous vehicles where you can actually activate this feature and the car can actually drive itself and you are hands-free, true hands-free, where you can actually engage the feature and now the car can actually drive itself uh, on specified roads that Ford has mapped out. Nice, and that's obviously going to expand from here. Like it's gonna be at its smallest at this point in this video, and they're just gonna add more and more roads. So having yeah. a vehicle that self-drives and is only gonna have more and more opportunities to self-drive is pretty sweet. So that's that blue cruise you're talking about right there, mm -hmm. huh? Wow, yeah. the camera actually picks up a little bit of the RF. So yeah, so actually that's, that, is, infrared. that that is a driver monitor camera. So oh. one thing that it does do is, with along with all of these ADAS features, um, it actually monitors the fact that you're still awake. So you still, even though your hands free, you still have to be conscious of the road in, in the case that there is some unknown that happens on the road. In the so does that fix control. the problem of always having to touch the steering wheel? It does. Wow, um, that so, was so annoying. So, so a lot of the other vehicles that are not equipped with a similar technology, you have to have your hand on the wheel, yeah. right? Or it needs to feel some type of pressure. Well, when Blue Cruise is engaged, you can actually remove your hands off the wheel. The car's not going to ask you to to put your hands on there anymore. But there is a driver monitoring system there, so it, it is looking for eyes, is making sure that you're not falling asleep. That's or perfect. A in your face, yeah. I know we're a Mustang channel. I know that we don't have these ty these types of technologies. A lot of you guys are manual and have you know old school V8s, things like that. The thing about self-driving, if you've never experienced it, is it takes the edge off of the vehicle driving experience. So. I don't mean like, oh yeah, I love, you know, not driving and not experiencing a road, you know, how it feels and turns. It's not about that. It's about those long road trips where all you're doing is staring at the back of another vehicle or two vehicles ahead safely. And you're just kind of getting from point A to point B. That's all you use this for. It's not gonna take you in the canyons and hit the turns and the apexes. This is just to take the edge off of everyday driving that we all have to do to get from point A to point B safely. So that's something that I really like about it because all the time, especially here in the California traffic, I just wish I could just sit back <laughs> and let it just take me because all I'm doing is stop and go traffic. It would just be so much easier to not have to deal with that. One of the other features that are in other F-150s that of course this one's gonna continue, the pro trailer backup assist. So you guys are backing up a trailer, you know, you can turn the steering wheel this way. Um, we also have our trailer brake if you want the manual se section here change your bias, things like that. Um, a lot of this stuff is pretty similar. Obviously you have your exterior lights, things like that. Um, pretty standard again on the F-150s that are platinum. But we do have this absolutely amazing full digital display, which looks sick. Um, and honestly, like the creature comforts of this truck, you're sitting nice and high, you still feel like a truck. You're not dealing with so much of like a car trying to be a truck. It still feels very truck. And I feel like this is just as durable, if not more durable because of less moving parts and long moving parts like a drive shaft than you know, the normal trucks that are out there on the road that are gas. Like this thing does feel very, very nice. And it's a platinum, right? Or is this an XLT? Uh, Lariat. Oh, this is a Lariat. See, I thought this could have been a platinum. You like, could, yeah, exactly. You could only go up from here. Yeah, the, you could only go up from here. Like Louis said, like all these materials feel really good. One of the things like I'm pressing, dude, I did not, expect that to be honest like <laughs> i was pressing on the dash i fully expected creaks you guys hear that go do that to your mustang just tell me what that's like <laughs> like go do that to your mustang because that honestly impresses the hell out of me i've done that on i've gone to carmax i've done that on all brands you know anything out there and they all creak like this thing is solid dude that's pretty freaking sick like that's that what that means to me is that when you're driving on the road one ev is pretty freaking quiet all you're gonna hear is tire maybe a little bit of a whir of an engine mm -hmm. or a motor yeah and that just means you're not gonna hear all those annoying rattles that's very very important for again not making yourself just tired after driving right you have your assist for the driving you're not hearing a bunch of annoying noises like an airplane or something like that where it's just like that raw noise over and over it's white noise that stuff wears you out mentally. So this will allow you to actually enjoy road trips and getting places. Seeing all these improvements quickly happen really gives me like hope for EVs. Plus, we're gonna start seeing some aftermarket parts and you know how we are. We always modify everything. 
So I can't wait to see how EVs really start to level up with aftermarket parts. I have really high hopes for the Lightning. One, it's, it's holding a name that's very, very popular within Ford culture. We all know SVT Lightning, but now we have the EV Lightning. And I'm very, very excited because it may be something that takes a year or two to catch on, but I have the vision for it. And who knows, maybe we'll get the Lightning, I don't know. We have another Ford vehicle on the way. We've kind of discussed that. Some of you guys know that, but maybe we get the Lightning because seeing it in person, and I haven't even driven it, but seeing it in person, I could live with this vehicle every day. And I just so badly want to add that Doty spec touch to all pieces of this. Like maybe we go wide body. Maybe we go like Baja looking Raptor that's completely quiet. Like who knows? There's so many possibilities with these trucks and you know, it's already black. So all we gotta do is start adding some yellow touches, do some lifts we can have a really, really nice truck. Huge thank you to SEMA Garage. Huge thank you to Luis for walking me through the truck. He had a lot of knowledge on this thing. Even being here to see how it's getting like 3D scanned and how all the manufacturers are gonna get access to this file and be able to start making their parts. This is like the nitty gritty of car culture that you guys don't see. This is what allows us to add our touch to these vehicles. And I'm so fortunate to be able to come down here and showcase that to you guys. So literally right here, we're like making history. So all of those parts that you're gonna start seeing for the F-150 Lightning, basically are starting right now. After these 3D scans go out and they get cleaned up and stuff like that, they're gonna start making parts. And so all those parts you're gonna see, well, most of those parts you're gonna see are happening because of these efforts. So huge shout out to SEMA Garage for this. Can't wait to see what the F-150 starts looking like as these parts come out. I've got some ideas in my head. Hopefully the aftermarkets are kind of on the same path as me. And uh, who knows, maybe we'll end up getting a new lightning. But I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up right here. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a comment down below. How do you feel about the F-150 Lightning? Really interested in hearing your guys' feedback. Are you totally an EV hater or are you kind of catching on to the bandwagon? Because I personally am catching on to the bandwagon. Seems like a great idea. It's not gonna replace my Whipple Supercharge 5.0, but it's an addition to the garage that I think really, really makes sense for a lot of people and even more people as it continues to improve. As always, like I said, hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, then please comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time.